So for tonight's homework, the only thing that I really need to go over is kind of talking about some of these things that are called identities and things you just kind of memorize. Um, so for one thing we have, we've talked about how the sine of theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. And then the uh, reciprocal of that is that um, the cosecant is equal to the hypotenuse over the um, opposite. And those, what happens is from this, we get this idea that sine of theta is actually equal to one over cosecant of theta. Now, this is something that you need to kind of have memorized and it is something that you will learn. Uh, in math, you keep hearing me say that when you, uh, in math, we don't change the way, the value of something, we just change the way it looks. So sometimes in math, you will literally have this in an equation and you will take it out and you'll put sine of theta in its place. And there possibly will be a time that you have a sine of theta and you will put this in its place. These guys are interchangeable. And I will prove to you right now that they are the same. And you will do something similar to this in your homework tonight. So let's start off with this. So let's say how is one over the cosecant of theta? How the heck is that really the same thing as sine? Well, let's start off with just this guy. We're going to leave the one. But how can I rewrite this? What's a different way I can write that? It's on the it's on it's on there right now. What? Hypotenuse over um opposite. So let's write that as hypotenuse over opposite. That right there, all I did is I took this out and I put what it equals in its place. Totally legal, correct? Does everybody understand that? Next, how can I change this? What is this really? H over O. Uh, no. Nope. Oh, okay. what, is, what is this line right here? Something I've asked you to start seeing since like day one. It is not a just a fraction bar. We divide. Yeah. So it is one divided by H over O, right? These two things say the same thing. This says one divided by H over O. This says one divided by H over O. Now, the reason I wrote it like that is because hopefully you remember we don't like to divide by fractions. What do we do instead? Keep, change, flip. Keep, change, flip. And then this turns into one times O over H. And what is anything times one? Well, anything times one in itself. So this is just O over H. And if you go back to the top, what is O over H equal to? O over H is really the sine of theta. So those guys are the same thing. Does that make sense? Give me a thumbs up if you got that. So just for fun, what do you think cosine of theta would be equal to? One over what? What's its reciprocal, guys? Um, secant of theta. Yeah, secant of theta. And what do you think, someone? Um, Savannah? Oh, never mind. You haven't been here. That'd be tough for you. Taylor, what do you think cotangent? Or, I'm sorry. What do you think tangent is equal to? Um, would it be one over... Would it be the, oh, I forgot what it's called, the. You can just spell it. The CSC. -E. No. That was this one. 
So sine and cosecant go together. Cosine and secant go together. Tangent and cotangent go together. Oh, okay. So it'd be one over cotangent would be the same. So these are the called identities and you need to know them. Uh, they are interchangeable. There will be times where you will see this and you'll put this in its place. And like I said, those times you see this, you'll put this in its place. Same with these down here. You'll see this, put this. They are interchangeable. And yes, sometimes we are stuck in a problem. When we have this and then all of a sudden we change it out for cosine and boom, we can keep moving forward. That's what math is all about, rewriting when things are equal and changing the way they look. Does that make sense? Last thing I need to talk to you about, and then I'm going to let you have the last 15, 10, 15 minutes to start your homework. Is let's pretend that this is X and this is Y. What would I know about like if I said sine? Of X, let's say this is a three. This is a four. This is a five. We'll just keep it with that easy. What would the sine of X be? If X was my angle, what would be the sine of X? Daniel. What would the sine of X be equal to? Why? No. Do you have any idea like sign the Sokotoa thing? Do you have any idea what that means and stands for? Sine, cosine. Uh... So Sokotoa. Do you have any idea what those letters represent or no? It's in my head, but uh. I can't really, can really put it out of my tongue. All right, let's see if Tia can help you out. For which one? What do you mean? For this triangle right here? Yeah. The well, sine, of, sine of X. It's opposite over hypotenuse. So which would be the opposite for if I was using this as my angle? Wouldn't it be four? Yes, over what? And then um, five. Perfect. See if someone is pretty smart and see if they can give me another instance where I would have equals four over five for this same triangle. Using a trig function. Um, cosine 90 degrees? No. Nope. Oh, um, y. Yes. Look at what the cosine of y is. What is the cosine? When I did the sine of x, the sine of this angle is the opposite over the hypotenuse. But when I use this as my angle, the cosine uses the adjacent, which is the same number four, over the hypotenuse, which is five. So the sine of X will equal the cosine of Y. As long as X and Y, what do they have to add up to? Well, let's think about this. What do all triangles have to add up to, guys? This should be known from geometry. 180 degrees. They have to be 180 degrees, correct? What do we already know? Because we're only going to do this sine, cosine, tangent when we're in a right triangle. What kind of angle do we know is already going to be in there? Um, 90 degrees or right. So what does that mean is left over for the other two? 90 degrees, right? So what do X and Y have to add up to be? 90. Correct. So as long as X and Y add up to 90, then I know this to be true. So here's what I mean. If I said the sine of 30, what would that equal to for my cosine? 60. Right. 
if I said the cosine of um, 10, what would that have to equal to or my sine of? What do these have to add up to be? It would be 80. Yeah. They have to together add up to be 90 degrees. All right, I'm going to go ahead and post your homework real quick. You can go ahead and continue working on this.